Welcome to the Electronics Basics series. Make sure you subscribe and click the bell icon to get notifications. I'm doing a video every day, so make sure you come back again tomorrow. In this video, I'm going to talk about diodes. There's so many different types of diodes, lots of different sizes, really small ones, the quite massive ones. But I'm just going to talk about what we'd see in electronics. So we'll start off with, we're going to get a signal diode, which I just dropped on the floor. So to start off with, we're going to look at a signal diode. This is a 1N4148, which is a really common part. There's also the 1N914, which is also very similar. These are very low current diodes. These are used in lots of the small electronic devices. You can put a little bit of current through them, like 50 milliamps, maybe 100 milliamps max, depending on which version they are. But that's about it. You can't do much with these. These are signal diodes. Fairly common parts used in low current situations. Here is a slightly beefier part. This is a 1N4007 which is a higher voltage and higher current device. This can take one amp. I think this is rated for 500 volts, I think it was. I can't remember exactly now, but this is definitely higher voltage, right? So this can withstand a lot more. This is a power diode. Another version of power diode are these, which are shocky diodes. These are basically lower loss, higher current kind of devices. These are SR510s in this case, shocky diodes. Diodes have a voltage drop across them, so you dissipate power in a diode. So diodes will get hot if you put a lot of current through them. So these, like these signal diodes, which I showed you before, a typical drop would be 600 to 700 millivolts drop across a, a diode junction. Shock keys are much lower than that; they're half that basically. Um, sort of 300 millivolts would be typical, you know, around that sort of region. So these dissipate much less power and can therefore take more current as well. Here we have a dual diode package. This is out of a switch mode power supply, this particular one. This is the part I've salvaged. It's a dual diode. Can you see the code in that? FMB36, is it? But it's basically a dual diode. It probably takes, I don't know, maybe 10 amps, this thing, across those junctions. I'd have to look specs up, but it'd be something decent, sort of like that, because it is heat sinked. The idea is you put this onto a heat sink, and it sucks the heat away, so you don't overload the diode and burn it out. So these can take quite a bit of power. The switching and losses through these is usually very small as well. And that could even be a shock key. We could actually measure some of these and actually see what they are. Here's a bridge rectifier, RS206. This is the full bridge rectifier. Hello, Electrobomb. So these are used for AC to DC conversion. So you put AC on the middle pins and you'll get a rectified AC out the outer pins. So basically what you do is you get a full sine wave coming in from AC. That's that full sine wave up and down. And on the output you'll get a half sine wave. So you get a basically a humped sine wave at the top, so basically the bottom gets folded over to be the top. Uh, but that's something I'll cover in rectification stuff. And here's a different version of the same thing. This is a 2W10. This is just a round version of a full bridge rectifier, different package style, lower current. In here we have more diodes. There's also Zener diodes, Vractor diodes, like very cat diodes. Um, Zener diodes have a breakdown voltage on them which is been designed into them so they actually have a reverse breakdown voltage which will you could set it might be like a 5 volt zener or 12 volt or whatever up to 39 volts I've got here and you put a voltage across those through a resistor which we covered before and they can only take a small amount of current I'm not talking about a lot of current and they will regulate to that voltage kind of they're temperature sensitive current sensitive and that kind of stuff but it gives you a ballpark voltage for something which isn't too critical so that's what they're generally used for um, also got service mount devices here like this is a service mount 1N4007 right it's a service mount version of this one all right so I've got lots of parts in here um, I've also got service mount bridge rectifiers all right so that's a service mount bridge rectifier which is like the equivalent of one of these basically modern technologies making things smaller. There's also things like TVS diodes which are transient voltage suppressors. So what they do is they clamp a bit like a Zener diode but only they can take a much more current and they're really fast. So they can actually clamp down a voltage spike and shunt it to ground. They're basically short out and you can use those as protection against um, over voltage situations in certain bits of gear. Let's measure the voltage drops across some of these diodes to demonstrate that. Here's my Fluke 175, it's set to diode mode, as you can see with the diode symbol over here. So you measure this diode, nothing in that direction, let's put it around the other way. In that direction we're getting 0.6 volt drop across that diode, which is typical. All right, here's a signal diode, like I said, same deal, should work the same way. The positive lead on the banded end, should be no conduction, spin it around the other way, and then we should get a voltage drop 
of about 0.6 volts. Again, typical. These shock keys will be different on a, in that reverse direction, say 0.34 voltage drop. And this way should be nothing as per the others. Refrigerator fires, just look at this one. In that direction, nothing. In that direction, nothing, because it's a center common. Swap it around. In this direction, again, 0.15. And this one here, 0.15 also, so this is a really uh, good one. This is a very low resistance on this one. This is some kind of shock key as well, which is a low power dissipation. So it'd be a very low power dissipation in this device from being 0.15 voltage drop, because it, because power loss is due to resistance and voltage drop and current. This bridge rectifier here, bridge rectifier has four diodes, in, like this one has two diodes. Bridge rectifiers have four diodes in them. So you can actually measure, just depending where you stick your probes on, just stick a probe on here, go to the positive, nothing there, go to the negative, should be nothing there, this side here, there's conduction. All right. And if I come to this lead and do the same thing, I've got conduction, that side, nothing, because that's the positive side, that's like the banded end of the other diodes, effectively. If I stick the probe any other way, I'll get that one, side there on the AC, we get that one. And across each other, you may see some kind of leakage between them, because you are going through two diode junctions to get there uh, because of the AC element. I might just stick an overlay to show the diode package. It's basically four diodes in a, in a format, but we'll cover that as well. And this will be the same. No point measuring that one. So this board here has got a larger bridge rectifier right here, full bridge rectifier, which is converting AC to DC. And we've got some more diodes down here as well. There's a couple of smaller ones around the place, power diodes as well. So one thing with diodes, I should probably explicitly state this, is that a diode only lets voltage pass through in one direction, but to a point. There is actually a reverse breakdown voltage, so if you go above a certain voltage, you can actually force voltage back through the other way if it exceeds the um, breakdown voltage of the diode. Now, that's quite high in modern diodes. Old diodes, not so much. The breakdown voltage and natural usable voltage are much lower. Modern diodes are somewhat better. You must also make sure that the reverse breakdown voltage isn't exceeded, so you couldn't put like a 50 volt diode in a mains application because you will find the reverse breakdown voltage would be exceeded and it will basically short out and blow. Subscribe and click the bell icon to get notifications. I'm doing a video every day, so make sure you come back again tomorrow.